Hi there, welcome to NEPI Invest. One of the things I'm doing right now is a project looking at the returns of a company after a significant day. And my definition of a significant day is either a rise or a fall of greater than 10%. And I'm already getting some interesting results, even though I'm only a part way, and when I say part way, I'm already a very small way through this project. And in today's video, I'm going to bring you, I think it's five companies that had a significant day on the 9th of January, 2023. Four companies had a good significant day when the share price rose by more than 10%. And another company had a bad significant day when the share price fell by more than 10%. Before we get into those five companies that had a significant day, I thought I'd just show you some of the interesting results I have seen so far and these results are preliminary fairly early in this project right now fair way to go but i have a fairly large uh, sample right now so i have at least i think in between about 50 and 100 days or sample points and i am starting to find some really interesting results so what i do is look for these days where a company's share price has risen or fallen by men more than 10 percent and then look at the returns after that significant day. So these returns do not include that significant day when the share price fell or rose by more than 10%. I've also sort of separating uh, the companies into mining and non-mining companies. And these results are non-mining companies. I've only, so far, I've only looked at mid and large caps. So I haven't really delved into small caps. And all the companies I'm looking at today are small cap companies. And it's not news dependent. And today, all the companies uh, whose share price rose or fell by more than 10% was news driven. And some of these uh, decreases or increases share price were not news driven. So on to the interesting results. And I probably will do a video on this Maybe I'll release it tomorrow or the next few days because I think since I am going to be looking or using these results in my videos from here on in, it's probably good to have a reference point. And then I'll update the reference point as I dig deeper into this project. So the first really interesting thing, and this actually was not a surprise for me, is that one week return. In fact, those companies whose share price fell 10% had better one-week one week returns than those companies whose share price rose 10%. And this is something I did think would happen because I have seen a lot of times when a share price of a company rallies or falls, more than likely you'll see the share price either go sideways for a period of time. And so this is not a big surprise. It was a bit of a surprise to see that the uh, companies whose share price fell by 10% actually slightly up from those companies whose share price rose 10%. But once we get to six months, we start to see some really interesting results. And we start to see how those companies who had a significant up day really start to outperform not only the market, but also those companies that had a significant down day. So after one month, those companies that were up 10% in one day rose a further 2.3%. After 16 or after six months, it's 17%. And after one year, 37%, significantly outperforming the market and significantly outperforming those companies who had a significant down day. Now, when we look at those companies who had a significant down day, the news just gets worse over the next month, down 2.1%, and over a six-month period, down 6%. But then the fortunes of those companies turn around. So it seems like if a company does have a bad day, don't take a position straight away. Wait for at least six months because then that bad news flows through and the share price starts to increase. So after one year, those companies who she seen the share price decrease by 10% in one day has seen their share price actually increase by 6%, which is just below the average market returns. So on to these five companies that had a significant day on January the 9th. These are all small cap companies. A few of these companies I do know a little bit about. One company I know nothing about at all. Actually, a few companies I know nothing about. 
The first company is LBT Innovations. This was a shareholding of mine many, many years ago. In fact, the share price went from about 10 cents to $1 in a few days because of FDA approval. And that was my selling uh, point. I was selling or the reason I sold uh, just to take profits. And I just think the market got a little bit exuberant when it came to this company. And then the share price has fallen from that $1 top. I think it was back in 2016, October, November 2016. Share price has fallen from what, what that $1 all the way back to about $0.06. Sense. However, LBT Innovations did release an interesting announcement in regards to getting into a partnership with AstraZeneca. Now, these are not the sort of announcements I actually like, and the market sometimes does get a little bit excited about these uh, sort of announcements, but I don't really respond to these announcements. I don't or I'm not willing to take a position based off these announcements. Uh, it's great that they're partnering with AstraZeneca, but this uh, the benefits of this partnership could be 100% for AstraZeneca and 0% for LBT Innovations because maybe LBT Innovations just see the name AstraZeneca and think it's just good to get in partnership with that company. And maybe in the future, there will be some benefits for LBT Innovations in the future, not necessarily around this partnership. So at this point in time, I'm not fully excited about this particular announcement but the market was. So let's have a look at the chart to see how the market reacted. Share price increased 16.67% uh, by nine, well, not nine cents, because the share price currently is 6.3 cents. So 0.9 cents up from 5.4 cents to 6.3 cents. And you'll notice here, and this is the chart that goes back almost one year, share price of LBT Innovations has been in a really well-defined downtrend during 2022 in the start of 2023, falling from about 12 cents down to a low. I think the low was less than five cents uh, in December. A nice little rally today, but when you look at the chart and where the share price did go, it just went into that red zone, which is a selling area in my opinion. And if you do have a look at that one day candlestick, a lot of selling came in during the day with LBT Innovations. In fact, the share price reached a high of about 7.1 cents. So at one point in time, the share price today was up over 30%. And it's no surprise to see there was a fair bit of selling because if we just go back a few months, the share price was higher. So there are investors who bought in at a higher share price who saw the opportunity to sell out today. And those sellers overwhelmed the market, overwhelmed the buyers, and that's why the share price fell during the day and not the best looking candlestick. So in my opinion, this is just my opinion, nothing to get too excited right now with LBT Innovations. Now on to Volpara. And Volpara announced they had signed five new contracts with a combined value of 12.3 million new, well, 12.3 million New Zealand dollars. Now, my favorite type of announcement is a profit upgrade. And just behind that is significant contracts. So whenever I see a company sign significant contracts, and then you can say or argue, what is a significant contract? Is signing five new contracts with a combined value of $12.3 million significant? So there will be arguments around this. I probably wouldn't say at this point, this would be absolutely significant, but it, it did. I did take notice to this announcement and the market took notice to this announcement. The other thing I should point out here, these are five year contracts. Now, if the company announces and releases another announcement with more contract news, some more really good contracts that could be another callus for re-rating of Volpara's health share price. So let's have a look at where Volpara share price sits right now and see how the market reacted to this bit of news. And just like LBT Innovations, share price of Volpara has been struggling over the past year and well, a, a nice downtrend. A lot of volatility in this downtrend, however, you can see back in June, the share price actually fell from about 77 cents all the way down to 40 cents in about one month. And as the share price got to the bottom of that uh, fairly significant down month, there was a lot of buying coming in. You can see the massive rise in volume during that period. So that was actually a buying opportunity. And since then, the share price has been even more, not maybe not even more volatile, but has remained volatile, uh, but has sort of gone sideways. And that was the low. 
The next low was a little bit higher and it looks like the next low we have just seen in December was higher than the previous low. So you could argue that possibly the share price of this company is trying to move into an uptrend with two successive higher lows, but we haven't seen a higher higher right now. And we'll need to see the share price get above 72 and a half cents, which is the two previous highs we have seen after that low in June. Now, we had seen the share price fall away from that 72 and a half cents down to around about 50 cents. And that was just before we saw uh, the company release this announcement. Now, share price did rebound up to 13.6%. Not a lot of selling, but there was a little bit of selling. And probably my biggest problem with this particular announcement was just the market reaction in terms of volume. Not a lot of volume. In fact, when we go back or look back at June, significant more volume. So even though the share price did rally, the market wasn't that excited just because of that lack of volume. And uh, this is just another one of these rallies in this volatile state that Volpara share price finds us or Volpara finds itself right now. Now to a company I've never heard of before, Austral Resources. And this announcement did pique my interest just because of the title, Commercial Production and Positive Operational Cash Flow Achieved at Ant Hill. Two things I like to see here. Well, one thing, I'm not sure if that, commercial production means they've just gone into commercial production and if they have just gone into commercial production and are operational cash flow positive that's a very good sign but the main thing i just wanted to focus on here was positive operational cash flow that is one thing i do look for in all companies now austral resources is a copper producer so there's not many copper producers on the ASX. And this is one company I'm going to start doing a little bit more research on. A lot of information here. They talk about cost. So I'm going to have to look at the cost they are spending to get the copper out of the ground uh, compared to the price of copper, that sort of thing. Also have to look at the mine life, uh, the mineral resources and all that sort of thing. So interesting company here. So let's have a look to see how the market did react to this positive news from Austral Resources. And Austral Resources share price has been all over the place over the past year. You can see back in say February, March of last year, share price going sideways at around about 17.5 to 20 cents. And then all of a sudden in May and June, uh, the market took notice to this company. Share price rose from that 20 cent range all the way to a high of 65 cents. So nice little free bagger in about one or two months of trading and really good volume as well. So the market really liked this company during that point in time. Uh, so maybe it, the company announced that they were going to production or something. I'll have to have a closer look. But then that excitement died away fairly quickly. We had a bit of a double top. That double top was very close together. And then the share price fell from that 65 cents all the way down to a low of about 15 cents, which was reached in the middle of December. And over the past, say, few weeks, as copper prices have started to move up. We have seen a little bit of a rally in Austral Resources share price, and that was before this announcement. And after this announcement, the share price has risen another 12% and closed at 28 cents. But when you look at the candlestick, this is sort of like an inverted hammer. Now I have read a few things that inverted hammer could be the sign of the end of a downtrend. But when I see an inverted hammer, I just see a lot of selling, that the selling sort of outweighed the buying, which sort of does make sense. Uh, pretty good volume as well. And the reason why the selling outweighed the buying for Austral Resources is just because the share price was significantly higher from about May through to September, October of this year. So there would be plenty of investors who bought in at higher prices, who saw that opportunity to get out today, and they took that opportunity and sold. And those sellers um, sort of um, just... Uh, that they, 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 they really um, outweighed the, the, the buyers. So that's probably the best way to put it. They outweigh the buyers, they overwhelm the buyers, and that's why the share price fell during the day. In fact, the share price at one point at the high in the day was 35 cents, which means the share price at one point in the day for Austral Resources was or had risen as much as about 40%. If it stayed at, say, 35 cents, if the share price reached its uh, high at the end of trading, that would have been a, an amazingly bullish signal. 
Uh, so we didn't see that for Austral Resources. Fair bit of selling came in. And the main reason we had that selling was because all of those buyers that had bought in uh, during that uh, May to September period of 2022. Now, I just featured Drone Shield in my technical update because there is increasing interest in this company, not only among the viewers of this channel, but uh, Drone Shield was featured in Bell Potter's stock picks for 2023. And lo and behold, Drone Shield has released another positive announcement. This is another uh, contract or order. This was for $11 million for a government agency customer. I think they've released a couple of pretty good um, announcements in regards to orders. So things are moving quite well for Drone Shield. So let's see how the market has reacted. And before we even get to the chart, I can tell you right now, this is the most bullish chart I will show you today. And in terms of looking bullish, uh, it has been true over the past, we'll say two or three weeks, because the share price towards the middle of December was down as low as 17 and a half cents. And since then, the share price has risen from 17 and a half cents up to the new uh, share price of 29 cents. So up 16%. On the back of this later latest contract or order and we have seen really good volume coming through in the past three weeks for drone shield so i'm always looking at volume and i want to see really good volume when the share price is increasing like this uh, for a company now the only bit of resistance for drone shield moving forward is uh, back uh, in april the share price actually did reach around these levels for a very brief period of time so there's still some investors out there who did buy in back in May, who might consider this company a dog stock because the share price fell from, from when they bought in and they have had the opportunity to sell out today. So this was actually another, not another, this was probably the most bullish day for any company I'm featuring in this uh, video because the share price didn't quite finish at the high of the day, but just below the high uh, at 29 cents. The high for the day was 20 and a half, 29 and a half cents. So the most bullish chart, the most bullish action, uh, daily action as well. So things are looking good for Drone Shield and for those shareholders who have bought in in the past few weeks. I have shown you four companies who released positive announcements for, for the day onto the only company that released a negative announcement, but they released this announcement uh, at the end of trading or after the end of trading on the Friday, the 6th of January. Not only that, they released this announcement at 8, 10 p.m., the last announcement of the day, and this was a profit warning. So the worst type of announcement a company can release are profit downgrades, and they're just saying this a profit warning, which is a downgrade. And it's even worse that they released this after the end of trading on Friday. They're trying to get this news through so no one sees it, but everyone's going to see it, and the market has reacted negatively, as you would think. So this is a profit downgrade. I haven't gone through this at all, but we know straight away, because this is a profit downgrade, the market is going to absolutely destroy the share price for this company. So let's have a look to see how much the share price fell for credit intelligence. The other thing I should mention, and one of the reasons I did have a look at this initially, apart from it being a profit warning, is because credit intelligence is a part of the... A group portfolio. So the group picked companies uh, just over one year ago, companies they thought would outperform the market over a five-year period. And this is one of the companies they picked, uh, collectively picked. And uh, the share price has performed quite well over the past month, few months. So let's see if that positive momentum, that positive sentiment driving credit intelligence share price higher has been destroyed. And it doesn't look good at this point in time. So we did see that rally in the share price for credit intelligence. Share price reached a low of about just below 10 cents back in June. And then it went below 10 cents again in August. The share price has gone up pretty well since then. In fact, the share price has gone has gone from being below 9 or 10 cents to a high of 24 and a half cents. We didn't we started to see a little bit subtly higher volume during that rise as well. And then the company released this proper warning. Share price fell 24%, which is what you should expect for any sort of profit downgrade. And the share price has fallen um, not towards the levels we saw back when the share price was at its lows 
in June and August last year, but there was high volume, but there was a little bit of buying during the day as well. We know there was a little bit of buying because the low in the day was actually 13 and a half cents. So at one point in time, the share price for this company was down almost 40%. So there was a little bit of buying. And I think the reason there was a little bit of buying was because of the share price action we had seen over the past few months. There was a little bit of positive action, some positive sentiment. And there would be some investors who had seen the share price drop by this amount and use their recency bias, knowing the share price was as high as 24 and a half cents and maybe saw some value. And that's why they disregarded this profit warning and saw opportunity to buy credit intelligence at lower prices than it was a few weeks ago, even yesterday. When I say yesterday, I mean the 6th of January, the Friday. So what does my project suggest is in store for the share price performance of these five companies? Now, be warned that my project is so far just focused on mid to large caps and all these companies are small cap companies. And if what I'm saying is true for small cap companies, just like they are for mid to large, large cap companies, it suggests that there is a greater potential or greater probability that those four companies that release a positive announcement today that saw the share price rally by more than 10%, there is a greater probability that their share price performance will outperform the market over the next six months to one year. And then on the flip side, there is a greater probability that credit intelligence will underperform the market over the next six months before the share price starts to recover. But again, these are small cap companies and my project is so far solely focused on mid to large cap companies. Anyway, uh, I'll probably do a video on my project in the next few days. So look out for that. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.